Aggression is one of the last dirty words in our culture. You can be crass, you can be rude, you can even be profane, but ho oh, ho, aggressive, don't be aggressive, except it's wrong, dead wrong. I promise you nothing of meaning and transcendence will come into your life passively. It's time for you to get into the arena to push back against a passive, mediocre existence. I'm Brian Tome, and this is The Aggressive Life. You know what I'm tired of hearing? I'm tired of hearing. I'm just not a disciplined person. I'm tired of hearing it. Actually, it normally goes more like this. I'm just, I'm just not a disciplined person. When I hear that, what the person's basically inferring is, if you mapped out my genome, I don't have the discipline gene. I just don't have the capacity to do things that are good for my future. I tell you what, if they find out that you don't have the discipline gene, they're also going to find out you don't have the aggressive gene. There is no discipline gene and there is no aggressive gene. There's nothing in your DNA that's going to make you want a better life. There's nothing in your DNA that's going to make you unsatisfied with status quo. There's nothing in your biology that's going to get you off your rumpus and get moving in another direction. The way we get discipline is by doing small things and we feel the win from those small things, so we want to do it again. And then we want a bigger win, so we build on that thing. Discipline comes through small little victories every day, every week, every month, every year. A person gets in shape physically because they have a small win of, I, uh, I'm, I'm not going to have cheese curls tonight. And you go that night, you go, hey, I did it. You know what? You know what I do? You know what I do tomorrow? Tomorrow, I'm going to walk a quarter of a mile. And you walk a quarter of a mile. Oh my gosh, I did that. I'm just going to walk a quarter of a mile for like a whole week straight. And you walk a quarter of a mile a whole week straight and you go, well, that's not that bad. You know what I do? I'm going to. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have not cheese curls tonight. I'm going to walk a quarter of a mile and I'm going to do five push-ups in, uh, in the morning. First thing in the morning, I'm going to do five push And that's how discipline works. You, you build confidence and you build your reps and things go forward. Friends, friends, let me tell you something. If you want your life to go forward, you have to shake off the stupid things that we believe like aggression is wrong. It's not, it's not wrong taking advantage of somebody physically or financially is wrong. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about grabbing your life by the throat. We're talking about taking responsibility for you. We're talking about erring on the side of doing instead of erring on the side of assuming. If you want your life to go forward, you're going to have to attain a mastery over your motives. You're going to have to want more of your life. Rocky Boyman had a dream that started in second grade. He decided he wanted to play football for Notre Dame, and, and he did. Following college, he was drafted into the NFL by the Tennessee Titans. He won Super Bowl Forty One as a member of the Indianapolis Colts. And after retiring, he has returned to his hometown of Cincinnati. He currently works as a weekday radio host and also a football analyst for ESPN, among other network. He is married, has two kids, has a lot to say on the importance of masculinity and not living a life of leisure and being aggressive. Rocky Boyman, welcome to The Aggressive <laughs> Life. If there's a podcast that centers on being aggressive, I want to be a part of it, so I'm happy to be here. So you, you, you count yourself as an aggressive man. Why? What's your credentials? I just gave your football credentials. That doesn't mean you're aggressive. I mean, does anybody get anywhere in life without being aggressive? I mean, think about all the people that you look up to that have accomplished, the CEOs, the athletes, the whatever. Have any of those folks ever, if you think about them, boy, they were led a really kind of just passive, didn't really upset anybody, didn't really, not really a go-getter. No, everybody, all those folks that are the tops of the folks you talk about are the ones that went and grabbed life by the you-know-what. Totally right. Chop, chop. Now, I wish this was a video a video program instead of a podcast because you 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 
doesn't look the part from what I just read. Like if you said, who would possibly want to go to Notre Dame? Somebody who has a full red head of hair. That's who. If it did, if my football career there didn't work out, it could have been a six foot four leprechaun there. So, <laughs> so there you go. And what was the dream for for Notre Dame? Why was that a big deal at second grade? Something happened in second um, grade? Not really. It was just you know I grew up. Um, my family was was Notre Dame fans, and uh, so just watching the games with my dad all growing up and going out in the backyard and throwing with them and talking about the, you know, the 88 championship team and Tony Rice and, you know, Michael Stonebreaker, who was a great linebacker, all these guys I looked up to when I was a kid. And, and I, by that time I'd started playing football. And hold on, hold on, hold on. And That's a real name. Michael Stonebreaker. Michael Stonebreaker. That was his... Look it up. Oh, Look him wow. up. He's the best. All right. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, you know, I, and I started playing football, loved it and was, you know, it was pretty good at it even at a young age. And yeah, in second grade, you kind of go around and they're, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a fireman. I want to be a, a preacher. I want to be a policeman. And I told my second grade teacher, Mrs. Smith, that I wanted to go to the University of Notre Dame. I want to play football and I want to be a captain. And um, I, kind of that, uh, having that in my mind, I'm a big visualization guy. And I, of course, didn't realize that back then, but that was something I always had in my head that I wanted to a- accomplish and wanted to be there. And life uh, kind of worked out and I wound up going there. Were you a captain at Notre Dame? I was. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Second grade, you had that vision mm-hmm. and you 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 said that. That that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. So if you had that as a vision in second grade, what are some things you did from second grade to when you graduated high school to make that dream a reality? work and sacrifice you know I was very and my dad and mom were very involved with me athletically you know my dad was working with me and it was never like forcing me to do anything but he knew I liked sports and and I was good at them and so it was hey let's go out in the backyard and, and throw let's toss let's run you know all those sort of things again was was not a him making me do it kind of thing You're I wanted, bonding with it was a right, ma- as a male bond 100 percent and that's where he he was a great athlete uh, he went to LaSalle high school was uh, had a bunch of running back records there but uh, so I, I think that's what kind of you know spurned that there was that connection that bond between he and I and I just you know and there was times there's things you have to give up you know you give up maybe going to summer camp or you do that but uh, you know I wanted to be around I wanted to play sports I played sports all year round and I worked at them hard and you know my dad you know, my dad's blue collar guy you know my whole family's blue collar guy so I, I'd see him see the example of him working hard every day, right? And, you know, again, even as he, he was a road maintenance worker, like, you know, laid blacktop, worked on, you know, catch basins, you know, roads, all that sort of stuff. Come home dead tired, but he always, would, and he would do stuff around the house. On the weekends, he'd have side projects where he earned some money. So we all, he was able to create a great life for us Despite being, you know, no college education, no, certainly no legacy, no, nothing like that. You know, his parents didn't give him any money. It was just sheer hard work. I mean, he got laid off when I was young and, you know, and he didn't sit around and cry about it and do all that. Even one day he woke up, he, he laid brick. Next day he'd sweep basements. Next day he'd do some electric work until he finally got back up and got the job. So that was at that impressionable age. That's what I saw. Wow. Is my example. Wow. So th- that ingrained in me again that the hard work that helped me to get to where I am, but also again just the intolerance to be around people that don't look at it that way or, and chase things that way. So you didn't get born then with the discipline gene because science has, <laughs> science has told us that some people have the discipline gene and everything is easy for them. Yeah. Well. This is probably why many of us. We have dreams and visions, and that's all they stay is dreams and visions. Mm-hmm. There's, a, there's a huge gap between thinking about something and doing about something. Right. And it sounds like your dad was your discipline gene just from the standpoint of, of he modeled it. He, he was. He was my discipline gene. He was my hard work gene. And he, but he was also my, my dream gene. Mm-hmm. Again, for... Because he was, again, he was a humble beginnings kind of guy. Didn't grow up with a ton of money. He didn't, again, no college education. Was a blue collar, literally worked with his hands. But we would have a, a a camp down in Lake Cumberland. Why? Because he literally built a house by himself, like mm-hmm. from the ground up. I watched my dad build a house in his garage in Cincinnati, hauled it down, all the pieces, all the you know, all that sort of stuff, <laughs> put it up down there. You know, so we always had that. He would always have like a, a sports car. Why? Because he would work on weekends and do extra things because he liked cars and he liked tinkering in the garage. So. He so he had a high happen. motor. He had high he had motor. high drive. High drive, high motor. 
Is yeah. he still alive right now? Absolutely is. Man. Yeah, he's great. There, there's a power, there's a power with a powerful dad, isn't there? Of all the things I'm blessed with, and I'm very blessed, I mean, having a, a, a dad that was A, around, and B, was, I mean, really, I mean, just took to me and in, in, in my upbringing and, and teaching is the greatest blessing I could have. I mean, I, I always, and I talk about on my radio show, I often say, most of our problems we have in, in the world, you could trace it back to like bad parenting or lack of parenting, right? Mm. Lack of dad being in the household. Yes. I, I think it's so important for dads, especially. We, we need our moms. Moms are the rock. They yeah. do everything. But you got to have a dad that's there to, you know, my dad provide the discipline. No BS kind of guy, right? Yeah. And, uh, and I'm very blessed and fortunate to have had that. A great dad is the most aggressive and potent force in life a child, and unfortunately, most of the father figures we see in media are these aggressive forces of impotence, <laughs> or they're physically aggressive, they're bad father figures. We, ju we just don't see great dads, and so maybe we're not learning how to be a great dad. How, how, how for you? Do you have any convictions you have about how you're going to raise your boys aggressively? I, I just think it's it's being a part of their life and, and playing with them. I think that's important. So my, my son's five. My other son's one. So he's not quite there yet, but we, we play a little bit. My five-year-old. Wrestling with him? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Got to get him down on the ground and wrestle <laughs> him a little bit. But uh, just being a making sure you're making a conscious effort because, I mean, you, everybody is, is busy, right? You're doing a lot of things and you, you work all day and you come home and you know, the kind of the natural thing to want to do is kind of kick back, watch some TV. But no, he's sitting there like, hey, dad, let's play this. Let's right. go, you know, ride bikes. Let's go, you know, toss baseball, that sort of thing. So it's, you know, it's in your head going, instead of going, oh, it's, it's going, yeah, th this is what I got to do. This is the thing that'll, you know, pay off down the line. So one of the things that's impressive about you, Rocky, is a lot of guys I've seen who have had success in sports, specifically guys I saw in high school who were the best athletes, um, tend to not come to high school reunions because they went on pure DNA in high school and they never learned how to discipline themselves and build a life after that, right? Right, right. I've also known guys who were great in the pros who the organization came around them and disciplined them. This is when you got to work out. Mm -hmm. This is what you have to do that. And then when that goes, they they gain weight and they just flounder in life. They're right. just not sure where to go. No structure. You're one of these dudes who's you've 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 made a number of transitions. You obviously transition from high school star to college star to NFL to and now another life that is not athletics focused. You're you're like in the one percent. Do you feel that way? I, I I mean I don't know about that, but I I do know that it is hard, especially from the you know for transitioning for from pro athletes. And I remember I mean I retired from the NFL at age thirty, and even me with you know, I had a degree from Notre Dame. I had solid parental structure. I had you know I came back home, so I had I knew people kind of thing. It, it's still a scary thing. It's scary because. You know, you spend your whole life doing it. Again, when I was started playing football, when I was seven years old, played all the way up to age 30. And, you know, there's a, yeah, I had other interests and pursued things, but to some degree, you have to, if you want to really chase that dream, you have to have some element of, of blinders on where you got to go for it. I mean, you can't have all these other lines in the water, right? You can, you know, you study, and I did well at school and did all that, but you got to really pursue that dream. So now it's there in, in a career that is arguably, one of the top feelings I think any person could get going out on a football field mm -hmm. and having 70,000 people cheer you knowing there's another couple million at home watching. So you do that. That is a high of all highs, right? Mm -hmm. So now you're sitting there at age 30 and you're like, how am I ever going to get a feeling anywhere close to that? It's very discouraging. And I think that is what happens to a lot of guys is they have some interests and of course they're driven, accomplished people. But I think people continue to get discouraged for two reasons. Number one, they keep looking backwards instead of forwards. They keep talking about, oh man, when I played this and I played that, I never did that. And also it's it's trying to it's getting discouraged because they 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 realize, or at least in their mind, think there's no way I'll ever reach a high of of that magnitude ever again. And and I oh by the way, I got another 60, 50 years of life left. Uh, That's discouraging. That is discouraging. Well you just mentioned one of the things that kills aggression 
it is reminiscing. Mm, yeah. You know, you just you 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 can't spend your time in the rear view mirror if you're going forward. Think about your car. We're sitting there, and what's the rear view mirror? It's this little square thing, mm -hmm. but the whole windshield is ahead of you to look forward. And people who have time to look at their high school yearbooks and to reminisce about yada yada yada, look at the year. That's the small stuff that's yeah. not going to get us forward. And I, you put your finger on something. I hadn't thought that much about before. You're right, man. The more we think about how great we were or how fun things used to be, the less we go forward. That, that's exactly right. I mean, Brian, I see you know guys I played with and on Facebook, for instance, and their profile picture is still them in a football uniform, or <laughs> every like seemingly every week they're posting some picture about something when they played, and it's like this is like this is like 10, 15 years ago. I, I never did that, and I don't know exactly where that came from. I, I don't, but I, I almost made a conscious effort. When I got done, I wasn't going to be the guy that always talked about my playing days and always talked about this and that. I was going to go forward. And and I think that really, really helped me to kind of get past that and move. Even the, I mean, I like talking about this, but I don't really – I don't really go there that much in terms of, boy, man, wasn't that great? You know, maybe once a year you see some of your buddies you played with. But other than that, no, it's all about now. Okay, so you mentioned one thing in transition. You mentioned you got to have a vision for the future. Don't look look behind. What else? When, 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 when someone, when an aggressive woman or aggressive man wants to make a transition, what are some other disciplines or some mindsets that you had that have enabled you to do that? I think you got to become a master of your craft, and that means putting work in. And that comes back to my, you know, my my dad, what he taught me. That's one thing he said. You, you got to know the ins and outs. You got to become a master of what you're doing. And there's one way to do that, and that's to put in the work. So, let's take broadcasting, for instance, which I'm involved in now. And it, and by the way, it, it's taken like eight years to kind of get to where I am, where I have a you know drive time show and plus an ESPN analyst kind of thing. But I just made the decision to totally immerse myself in that, you know, say, again, eight eight or so years ago and just totally get involved in it, read, talk to people, just be, just do whatever you possibly can to, to master that craft. And, and, that, and then once you have the no, the knowledge, then you have the power to, to really, you know, in, instead of worrying about, you know, what suit do I need to put on all that? No, yeah. get down in there and watch some tape. You know, mm. get down there and read something. Talk to a coach or uh, in my, on my radio show, talk to a, a public official about what's going on. Talk to a doctor about why the opioid epidemic is so. Talk to a police officer of why we you know we can't uh, solve this or that. Uh, so that's the kind of thing. Is I think you, the next part of that is the. You know, while you're not looking, use the time you're not looking in the rearview mirror to, to really just bear down and 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 study and 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 whatever that passion is to work and grind it. Yeah, it's got to be tough though to be the newbie, right? Because mm -hmm. you've you've been blessed with some good genetics and blessed some great discipline from seven to thirty. It's not just seven to thirty. Uh, you've been an athlete, but for, but from seven to thirty, you've been a top dog, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And now. You're not. So how, how do you deal with that as a humility standpoint? I think that's why a lot of us don't try new things. Mm -hmm. We don't pick up new hobbies. We don't try new careers. We, we don't do new things because we're, we're, we're not humble enough to be a greenhorn. Right. We're going to feel stupid. How do you, how'd you deal with that? Um, I, I think one thing is, in is as great as like my NFL career was and playing career, well, you know, college pro and all that. You know, it's a career, eight years, Super Bowl, some individual accolades, as, as good as that was. I mean, and that's something, a career that 99% of kids today would sign up for right now. Yeah, give me that. I, there's, in my mind, I look at of all the things that I fell short on and the things I'm, I'm unfulfilled or I didn't, I, I wanted to. I wanted to play in a damn Pro Bowl. I never did get to. You know, yeah. I was close one year and, you know, all these sort of things. I see the, the places where I fell short, but... I, I finally realized not long ago that that, that was a complete blessing, man. Because had I not, had, had I accomplished, had I went to like three Pro Bowls and I did all this, I don't know if I'd be as motivated in the now the second or third chapter of my life to really make it, man. I, I'm on a That's mission, great. you know, to in, whether it's broadcasting or other things I'm interested in. I, I, I feel like I, I didn't do it, man. I, I didn't. Get to exactly I where I want. Feel your face right now. It still yeah, bothers you. I it see does. Your face. It's, it's grimacing. The redhead is grimacing here <laughs> in the studio. Dude, would you like a Kleenex? No, <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. So I'm gonna start throwing things here, right? Um, but uh, no, that, that's that's part of it. Is um, is I didn't get 
everything I wanted or accomplished all those things I wanted. There were setbacks and things that were out of my control, maybe some things that were in my control. But that's, again, as I said, a, a blessing because had I not had those, had I, you know, I'd, be, I'd be like, man, okay, this is great. And you'd be looking in that rearview mirror instead of four. Right. Disappointment can dive us or it can drive us. It right. can dive us the depths or it can drive us. And I, I love... I love your attitude. You know, the book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 7 says, as a man or woman thinketh, so is he. Mm -hmm. As a man thinketh. So if you think, if you think you can't do something, you're probably not going to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. If you have a disappointment that you didn't reach a goal and you think you're never going to reach another goal, you're probably never going to reach another goal. But if you reach that goal and you, and you think to yourself, huh, I just learned that I don't like it when I don't reach a goal. So I'm going to work hard next time so I do reach that goal. Yeah. As a man yeah. thinketh, so is he. It's, it's pretty simple when you break it down like that, but it's I think it's hard. I don't know if it's people's egos. I don't know if it's just, I don't know what it is, but uh, I, I, that that mindset is, is, has worked. Well, whenever I'm, I meet a linebacker, I think that there's maybe something that draws you to the position mm -hmm. that helps you with this in life. Um, I, I played a little linebacker in, in high school, mm -hmm. little, mm -hmm. very little. I was brought in on passing situations. You had good size, by the way. I can see the, you uh, know, that, see that. that. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I was just brought in on passing situations. I, my, my main was, was center. I played center. The reason why I wasn't better at linebacker was looking back on it, I didn't realize at the time, but looking back on it as I replay plays in my mind and stuff, I didn't make decisions quickly enough initially. Mm -hmm. I, I never could get down exactly what my read was. Like, am I looking at the guard? Is he going to go to my right or my left? Am I going to fight him opposite? Or is, which back am I king? Am I, 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 I just, I would get bogged down. And now when I was good in passes because I know a pass and I can get my position and I can read the field. But it's that that decision-making, that snap decision-making. Would you agree that's a key thing for, for linebackers? 100%. And that's a key trait for anything right anything in life is i mean look let's you know let's take a you know linebacker but linebacker you gotta have good vision right you gotta be able to kind of like you just described you gotta be able to see things how do you have good vision you open your vision you don't look at just the guard or the center as i got going especially my nfl career i learned to to expand my view to the whole line from tackle to tackle and see everything is this guy setting back further than that guy is this guy pulling that open your vision up that's number one you know both literally and figuratively and then from there you got to trust your eyes right you, you know often we 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 see it and we we know it but we're kind of hesitant because like ah, is that, am i really seeing that play am i really seeing that guard pull or am i really seeing this sign in life and you hesitate and by then it's it's gone i mean in the nfl obviously you know if you hesitate and you don't trust your eyes you're done and a lot of times and same thing in life when major life decisions come up whether whatever occupation you are if you don't have your vision and you don't you believe what you see and what you know in your heart is true you hesitate and that opportunity may be gone amen so you're on the Board of Life Learning Center. Mm -hmm. What is that? What's going on with it? So Life Learning Center is so across the river in Covington, Kentucky, and it's a place where we offer second chances to people. Now, now what does that mean? It means, you know, many people, I'm sure all of us at some point have needed a second chance in life to some degree. We've screwed up. We've been given an opportunity that we squandered, whatever it is. This is a place where you can come back and, and get that. And it, largely what we're dealing with is people that have been incarcerated, people dealing with the effects of drugs, you know, that sort of thing that have just been constantly in this downward spiral of crap, right? Yes. Basically, I often I often compare it to like, you know, you go to these like college football complexes, right? Like Clemson, Ohio State, and it's all these multi-million dollar this, and they got, you know, the training table is amazing, and they got the you know, the outdoor uh, basketball courts, think all these amazing, what, what's the reason for all that? The reason why these coaches and these programs do that is to remove any excuse you have to not be the best football player you can. So to compare that, Life Learning Center, we offer kind of the similar thing. We serve breakfast and lunch, okay? So that's covered. You know, you got kids, boom, we got a five-star daycare service. Mm. If you need uh, help, uh, a counselor on drugs or alcohol, boom, we got that for you. You need help on how to get your license, boom, we got someone mm. that can help you with that. Anything you need, just ask for it. 
all we ask in return is you're A, respectful, and B, you come in here with a mindset you're going to try your best to become the best person you possibly can be. So there's a 12-week curriculum. It focuses on you know, finding your purpose in life and getting negative influences out of your life and uh, combined with all those sort of things. And I mean, it's, it, I think it's pretty intense. I've never been, I've never seen or been a part of anything like it. And, and I'm just excited. I'm again, I'm on the board. I now I teach, I do a physical education half hour class every Thursday where, cause I, my thing yeah. is like with working out is you accomplish one thing early in the morning and then you go on to the next thing. So we get in there, camaraderie, there's, uh, you know, there's camaraderie and group suffering, right? Yeah, like, right. oh, this sucks. But that's, that's kind of what brings everyone together. So I'm happy to be a part of that. And, and I think just there's a lot of things that, that can solve. You know, the criminal justice system is is overrun. There's so many, so much, I mean, money that's wasted. There are so many people that are in prison that, but again, a lot of it's just people that, that need a second chance. And we're not talking violent offenders, sex offenders, all that. We're talking just people that mostly have been caught up in drugs and made some bad decisions. Come here, and we'll help you get your life back going. That is a great vision for that organization, and I'm I'm drawn again by how you can't get away from the ways that God has formed you earlier in your life. Like you keep coming to a football illustration. Like I I never thought about that before with all the expensive facilities at yeah, all no, the colleges. Says, why why do we need no, why make, the kids need this? Well, it's because you you can removing know distractions. Everything. You're, re, you're you're removing that so they become the best version of that. Removing I I'd never thought about that and that you you just you, you you've learned from previous things in life and applying them to where you are right now. And I think all of our listeners could do that. All of us can say what are the life experiences I've had mm -hmm. where God has put me specific places? I've seen specific things and that's going to be my template for how I aggressively have success in the future. Correct. That's a that's a that's a great insight, Rocky. Create a place where there's no excuse for failure but yourself. Yeah. That's what it is. Well, Rocky, how can people connect with you if they want to still hear about you, follow you, or be in the know of your life? Yeah. So uh, social media, of course, is, is uh, uh, at Rocky Boyman 50. Uh, at Rocky Boyman 1 through 49 was already... I'm just kidding. That was my football <laughs> number. So it's at Rocky Boyman 50, um, at uh, Rocky Boyman ESPN on Instagram, but then also Monday through Friday on 700 WLW, 3 to 6, the Eddie and Rocky show. And then you can catch me uh, doing some college football games here uh, this fall. Rocky, it's been great having you today. I've learned a lot, and I think we're all the better for it. Hey, 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 let's get aggressive, Rocky. Let's get Come, it on. Going. Come on. Let's, 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 let's not say our day ends right here. We're just <laughs> the beginning of the day. This has been it, the aggressive life. We'll see you next time. Hey, thanks for listening. If this episode has impacted you, hey, share with somebody else. All of us have influence. People that can look to us for direction. Use your influence positively, aggressively. And if this has meant something to you, then pass it along to those that you're leading. Uh, you can see more at bryantome.com or search me on Instagram. Special thanks to the band Judges for our music. You can find more from them on Instagram at The Band Judges or at Facebook.com slash The Band Judges. The Aggressive Life with Brian Tome is a production of Crossroads Church, Cincinnati, Ohio. Hey.